In today's session of numerical methods, I like to continue talking about the time discretization of stochastic differential equations. So we already started this session, time discretization of stochastic processes, um, by just defining discretization schemes. And uh, here's the Euler scheme. And what I would like to do today is start proving uh, the convergence of the Euler scheme to the solution of the stochastic differential equation. Um, so I need, uh, say, two sessions to prove the um, strong convergence, and then we will have one or two other sessions to prove the weak convergence. So we will prove different uh, types of convergence. And uh, in the last session, yeah, we already had a look uh, at the discretization scheme by performing a Monte Carlo simulation. So if you have here the stochastic differential equation with coefficient mu and sigma, the Euler scheme is just uh, taking a piecewise constant coefficient. So it's just freezing the coefficient at fixed time points, time points given here by a time discretization. And then it defines approximation. So the next value is given by the previous value plus the approximate increment. Of course, here in this approximate increment, we have to use the approximation if x is part of the function. So that was the Euler scheme. And we already had a look at what happens if we say simulate a stochastic process. And here in this example, I simulated a log normal process. So I know that the logarithm of the final value has to be normal distributed. And then I can compare it with the analytic solution of the mean and the variance. So we will check the mean and the variance. And we saw that here for the Euler scheme, indeed, this is the error. So this is delta mean, delta variance. This is the error, the difference of the simulated solution from the analytic solution. And we saw that there is here some convergence. And uh, it looked a little bit that the convergence is one over n. Uh, so if you double the number of points, so if you double the number of discretization points, you have the error of the mean. So it looks a little bit as if we have here something like one over n. So if we have here, for example, some 150 time steps, yeah, it's so some three point something. And then if we go to 300 something time steps, yeah, it's something like 1.5, yeah, a little bit better already. So it looks a little bit as this is taking half of the error or the same here, if we have some 200 time steps and we take 400 time steps here. So it's something like 2.2 and here below it's um, 1.2. Okay, sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse. Um, if you let this program run much longer, yeah, you will see that there is no more improvement. Uh, and if you look here at the log Euler, which is actually actually the exact solution, then you see that even this guy has some error and there's actually no improvement. So you see here, the second point looks already quite good. This guy looks already quite good. And here you have similar, similar points. Okay, so what's the reason for that? The reason is that I'm using a Monte Carlo simulation and there's still a Monte Carlo error. Okay, and of course, there's also still a Monte Carlo error in the Euler scheme. 
So in the end, it is that the time discretization error is small and much smaller as the, compared to the Monte Carlo error. So we won't see the error uh, of the time discretization anymore and everything we see is just Monte Carlo error. And that's the reason why here in, uh, if you continue here to higher discretizations, then sometimes you see no more improvement. That's just a remark if you like to play with this little toy. And now um, we have a guess here. Okay, this scheme uh, converges one over N and now I like to prove convergence. Okay, so we have a section on convergence rate of the Euler scheme. Uh, we will prove two different types of convergence, strong and weak convergence. So first, before I define what is strong and weak convergence, uh, let's ask ourselves, okay, in what, in which sense um, is now this scheme approximating, so converging to the true solution. So we are considering a sequence of time discretization. We have a time discretization Ti, T0, T1, up to Tn. And we have that for different ends. So we take more and more time points. They do not need to be refinements. Yeah. So it can be just T capital T, divided by n times i. Yeah? So just an equidistribution and becomes finer and finer. Yeah? So some time discretization and this time discretization depends here on a parameter n that tells me how many time points do we use. So actually we have n plus one time points and n intervals here. My initial value T0 is zero. My last value Tn is capital T. So I am discretizing here a fixed interval. So I start in zero, there is some time horizon and I'm discretizing here this interval with this time discretization. And now I look at what is the, sm uh, the largest time step size. So this here, Hn, is the largest time step size of this time discretization. And I now consider convergence in the sense that Hn goes to zero. So I assume that I have a time discretization that is such that the largest time step size goes to zero. If I have an equidistant discretization, yeah, that is just the same as n goes to infinity. But uh, if it is some um, other discretization, of course, I just consider uh, hn, so the largest time step size. The largest time step size will somehow define my discretization error. So now I like to prove that my Euler scheme, so here's the scheme again, uh, converges to the true solution of YSDE, my stochastic differential equation. So it should converge to the solution X of T, where DX is mu DT plus sigma DW, my E2 process. Uh, both guys have the same initial value. Okay, so the initial value can be a random value, can be just a constant is the same. Um, and my Euler scheme is taking now this time discretization Ti superscript n. So it's taking the time discretization with n plus one time points and intervals. And it's generating on this discretization random variables. And now the random variables are called x tilde because they are approximations. It's not the true x. And they are called x tilde superscript n because, of course, the solution x tilde here depends on the time discretization that I use. So now I have a family of random variables that depends on the n. Yeah? So for each n, I have a family of random variables, and the family of random variables is s superscript n of. Ti superscript n. 
So in which sense does now this discrete process, so the discrete family, converge to the time continuous process? So maybe you remember that this here is just a short notation. For X of say some later value is the initial value plus the integral from zero to T. Then I have something like mu S X of S DS plus Sigma S X of S DW. And if you like, you can have a second integral sign here. Okay, so this is just a short notation and this exists for all times. So if you draw a little picture here, so I have that here I start in the initial value and then I have the stochastic process. Okay, so maybe this here is now X. Well, it's a function of time so maybe I should write, this is T maps to X of T and Omega. So on a specific path, but my Euler scheme is just generating discrete values. Yeah? So it is for say T1 generating a new value. And then it's for T2, T3, and so on. And maybe here is some time horizon. So we draw here our time horizon. So this here is our capital T. So it just generates discrete values. Of course, these values are random variables. So it generates here different values for different omegas. Yeah, so this here is maybe omega three and this guy is maybe omega two. Okay, but I just have a set of random variables and in which sense does now this sequence of points converge to this line, to this function. So I somehow have to define this. So we need uh, some interpolation on these points. Um, so consider some interpolation on the Euler step approximations. So maybe we should consider a linear interpolation. So is this here what we do? Okay, so then we draw a line and now we ask ourselves, does this uh, converge? Yeah, so does the um, brown line, if I perform a refinement, converge somehow to the green line? So I don't know. Yeah. So well, this is not what we do. So uh, we do it. So we do it like this. Okay, so now it comes on the next slide. So our Euler scheme only defines X tilde superscript N at discrete time points. Yeah? So the next time point is TI plus one, if you know the point in TI. And we define some specific piecewise linear interpolation. Yeah, it's a kind of piecewise linear inter interpolation, namely um, the value X tilde superscript n at little t for little t in between ti and ti plus one. So at the interpolated point is indeed the linear interpolation to go to the next time step. So the linear interpolation is start at the point of the Euler scheme and take here the linear interpolation of the dt part but important, we do not just linear interpolate WTI plus one and WTI, 
so the two random variables, so it's not the linear interpolation of the two random variables, it is that we use here W of T. Okay, so we just define a stochastic process that connects the two random variables. So this is here the specific, well, version of our linear interpolation. We connect the two random variables. It's actually a Brownian bridge, uh, if you know that. Okay, by taking here the Brownian motion, W um, of T. So, and check that, um, for little t equals t i plus one on the time discretization n, on the refinement level n, we get that on the left-hand side, the x t is indeed the x of t i plus one superscript n from the Euler scheme, yeah? always the x tilde. Okay, because the Euler scheme has here in this part, just WTI plus one minus WTI. Okay, so if you go back to the picture, it doesn't look like the brown line, it looks like the blue line. So, okay, so it connects now the blue points by actually using the correct Brownian motion on the blue points, okay? It is, an interpolation using the Brownian motion. That is already part of the true solution. Uh, so what are we actually doing? So the thing is that this here is just the stochastic process where we have, so this is just the stochastic process where we have piecewise constant coefficients. So it's just that we take these guys here, constant. So on the interval, ti superscript n to ti plus one superscript n. If I differentiate now the x superscript n, x tilde superscript n on the left-hand side, then I get that x tilde superscript n of t is just a constant coefficient, namely the one frozen at the beginning of this interval. Okay, so a lot of notation here, dt plus a constant coefficient sigma so sigma namely evaluated at ti and x tilde also evaluated at ti multiplied with the Brownian increment dw. So now I, you see that I have the Euler scheme which generates a family of random variables. And then out of these random variables, I define a very simple interpolating stochastic process that has exactly uh, these uh, realizations at these time discretization points. So this is now the stochastic process defined by the Euler scheme. And the nice thing is now I have two things of the same type. I have two stochastic processes. So if I go back, I have the stochastic process here that is given by the initial SDE. So this guy here, X of T. And now for my Euler scheme, instead of using just these random variables, I have a full stochastic process. And now I can consider the convergence of one stochastic process to the other stochastic process. Okay, I, I'm, I'm still actually defining in what sense I do understand the convergence. So now I have the same objects, convergence of stochastic processes. And what is the guy that goes to infinity or goes to zero? Okay, that's here my time discretization. Okay, so that's just what I had on the previous slide. So I can now define 
a stochastic process for the Euler scheme solution X tilde superscript N. Yeah, it's an Ito process with piecewise constant coefficients. So now we have the object that for which we look at convergence. We have the limit part. It is the time step size that goes to zero. And the next thing is I need to define the metric in which I look at convergence of a stochastic process. So what is the distance of two such stochastic processes? And that's strong and weak convergence. So which we just define now. So we will discuss here for the Euler scheme, two different types of convergence, strong convergence and weak convergence. Um, I start today or in this and the next session with uh, strong convergence, uh, but uh, actually weak convergence, as I will explain later, is a little bit more relevant to us. Huh? It sounds weaker, yeah? so it sounds maybe less relevant, but it, it is the one that is of much more interest to us. So just recall the definition of strong and weak convergence. So we say that a stochastic process X tilde superscript N, yeah, so with my notation from the previous slides, converges strongly if the supremum over all times, so I'm taking here the supremum over all times, on my time interval, so for little t from zero to capital T, of the distance of the two random variables. So x of t minus x tilde superscript n of t. So what is this guy? So this guy is the largest distance, but since x and x tilde are stochastic processes evaluated at t, they are random variables. This guy, including here the supremum is still a random variable. Yeah, so it can still look on a specific path, yeah, so of omega. And from that random variable, so it's positive because there's here absolute value. From that random variable, I now take the expectation. And strong convergence is that this goes to zero. So the expectation of the absolute distance of the two random variables, supremum over all uh, times here. Uh, so of the supremum of all uh, distances is going to zero. So we will also prove a convergence order so we will prove an estimate that estimates the error in terms of, and now what is the object that we let go uh, in the refinement to zero? It is the largest time discretization size. So the largest time step. We say that X to the superscript N converges to X with strong order gamma. If we can estimate here this error term, so this whole guy here, if we can estimate this guy by a constant times h to the power of gamma, hn to the power of gamma. So, and what we will do later is we will prove that the Euler scheme has strong convergence order one half. So it converges like uh, square root of the time step size. Okay, so that's um, strong convergence. Uh, in the numerical experiment, you saw that we had order one over N. So that is in the time step size order one, yeah, it's, so uh, it appears as this was weak convergence, what we saw, yeah, because I will later show you that strong convergence for the Euler scheme is order one half. Uh, we will have weak convergence order one. So what is weak convergence? So we say that um, X tilde 
superscript n converges weakly. So, and now we relax a little bit the conditions. If for any fixed little t, so we look here at some fixed time and we just look at the random variable at that time. So it's not the supremum over all times. It's just the random variable for a fixed time. And then we relax it even further by looking at a test function. So for any Lipschitz continuous function, we just compare the value f of x of t and f of x tilde superscript n of t, and we compare just the expectation of the two. So we ask ourselves, is the expectation of a function of the random variable at a fixed time point converging? So we do not have the supremum over all values and we just do this for a given uh, test function. We can of course also define a convergence rate. So we say that x tilde superscript n converges to x with weak order gamma. If we just can estimate now again here this error term. So the difference of the two expectations of the test functions evaluated at x of t or x tilde of t. So if the absolute value of this is less than some constant h to the power of gamma. So that's weak convergence. And I already made that remark. So maybe we have a small remark here. Uh, weak convergence is maybe the one that is more relevant to us. Okay, so um, why is um, this um, more relevant to us? So think of the application. Valuation of a financial derivative. Then you have some some model, okay? So there, for example, a Black-Scholes-like model, something like that. Okay, so then maybe you have some Euler scheme that approximates S of capital T. And then the object that you like to calculate is the expectation of a function, say g, of s of t. So this is the valuation. Um, why is that? Okay, where is this coming from? So the expectation here is coming from the universal pricing theorem. So the universal pricing theorem tells us that we can move to an equivalent martingale measure. And then the value of the financial derivative is the expectation of a future value, a future payoff. So that comes from the universal pricing theorem. Then I have here a function G this is in the application, the payoff. So for example, the maximum, say X minus K and zero. Yeah? So for, for um, a European option. And then we have here a fixed time and why do we have a fixed time in this application? Because there is a certain maturity when the payoff is paid. 
So you see that in this application, we are exactly in the situation that we are interested in what is the convergence. So we are interested, interested in this object the, of the expectation of a function applied to the random variable where the random variable is a realization of a stochastic process, so is approximated by our, our Euler scheme. Okay, so that was just a small remark that actually weak convergence is the stuff that is maybe a little bit more of interest to us. And if you go back here to this experiment, you see that in this experiment, it was exactly that what we calculated. So we were looking here at a function logarithm of S of capital T, so at a fixed time. And we were looking here, for example, at the mean, so the expectation. And the variance is just the expectation of the square, yeah, so it's just another function. Okay, so now I have defined the two metrics, the two uh, types of convergence, strong and weak convergence, and we can investigate the convergence rate for the Euler scheme. Um, a small remark on the notation. You already saw that the notation is quite ugly now. We have the tilde to distinguish the Euler scheme approximation from the true solution. And I have here the superscript N that tells me on which level am I. And for the result, it's actually just enough to prove here always the second part, yeah? always the estimate. Because if I have the estimate, if I've proven the estimate, then of course I have the convergence, the weak the convergence. So if I know the order, I know the, uh, if, if I have uh, weak convergence. The same here. So for the estimate, it is sufficient to prove an estimate in terms of the time step size the largest time step size, but if it is equidistributed, equidistant, it's just the time step size. So if I prove an estimate in terms of the time step size, I'm done. So I do not need to consider multiple different time discretizations. It's just enough to consider one and prove here this estimate in terms of the time step size. So I can actually drop here the superscript N, I can drop this index N on the stochastic process, because I just will consider one approximation on the time step size, the largest time step size, H, because I just will consider one time discretization. So also on the time discretization. So I will just consider one time discretization, T0 to Tn, and on this time discretization, H is now the largest step size. So Ti plus one minus Ti over all I. And this defines one Euler scheme solution. So I have one Euler scheme here. Note again, it is now my Euler scheme solution. So it is the stochastic process where I have here in the drift part T minus Ti. And if little t is Ti plus one, this is just the delta Ti. And here in the diffusion part, I have Wt minus Wti. So if little t is Ti plus one, this is the delta Wti. So this is now the stochastic process, which has the property that at the time discretization points, it agrees with the Euler scheme. So this eases now a little bit the notation because I can remove the uh, superscript N. So to ease notation, we just consider a fixed N yeah, and it is enough to prove the corresponding estimates. And recall that I can write this as a stochastic process. So I can now write this as a stochastic process. It's a stochastic process with piecewise constant coefficients. So let me now call these coefficients mu tilde and sigma tilde. And 
these coefficients are defined piecewise constant on a time discretization interval where mu tilde of little t is just mu of ti, x tilde of ti. So freezing the coefficient at the beginning of the interval using the Euler scheme solution. And sigma tilde of little t is just sigma of ti, x tilde of ti. Now I have a nice setup. Yeah? So I have two stochastic processes, dx, mu of t, x of t, dt, sigma of t, x of t, dw of t. And I have dx tilde, mu tilde dt plus sigma tilde dw. And now I can ask myself, can I prove an estimate? So um, now I can ask myself, can I prove an estimate between x and x tilde in terms of here this h? So I'd like to skip this here because we will need it in the proof. And I just want to finish before we have a little break to state uh, the result. So here's now the theorem. So we assume that mu and sigma, they satisfy some condition. So we assume that mu and sigma satisfy some global Lipschitz condition. So what does this mean? So it means that if I have two different times, t and s, and two different values, x and y. So these are possible values of the stochastic process x. Yeah? So little x and little y. Then I can estimate the distance of mu tx and mu sy by a constant times the time diff distance plus the space distance. So this is c times t minus s plus c times x minus y. So the coefficients of the SDE are Lipschitz con uh, continuous in both arguments. So I have the same also for sigma, sigma t of x minus sigma s of y absolute value can be estimated by a constant or times t minus s plus x minus y. Okay, so of course, my Euler scheme evaluates the coefficients only at discrete times. And my stochastic process runs, of course, over the whole interval. Yeah? So if I don't have continuity in the coefficients, yeah, it will be hard to prove this um, estimate. Yeah? So if, 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 I, if I don't have here, for example, that the coefficient can all be already be estimated with the step size. Yeah? I cannot expect that I can estimate this with the solution. Okay, so if I have this for the coefficient, then x tilde superscript n converges to x with strong order one half. And specifically, I have now that the estimate, okay, what is strong convergence? Strong convergence is I look at the supremum over all possible times, look at the difference of the Euler scheme solution to the true solution, take the absolute value, take the supremum over all those differences, take the expectation and you can estimate this guy with the step size to the power of one half. Okay, so we have here a one half, this means order convergence order convergence rate one half. So with some constant C of T. Okay, let's have a break here. Let's do the proof in the next session.